Welcome back to Velshin Rule. On a day when the case for impeaching Donald Trump look less, looks less hypothetical than ever. I'm going to yep. say that one more time. On a day when impeaching the president of the United States is actually a valid topic. All Can right, you if, get your head around that? It, it, it's crazy, but it, it keeps on building. If the provocative BuzzFeed News headline is accurate and the president directed his former attorney, Michael Cohen, to lie to Congress about his Moscow Tower project, could be an impeachable offense. Just ask President Trump's own nominee for Attorney General, oh. William Barr, who said this week, he said this at Tuesday's Capitol Hill hearing. Listen. You wrote on page one that a president persuading a person to commit perjury would be obstruction. Is that right? That, y yes. Okay. Or any, any, well, you know, any person who persuades person. another. To, yeah. Okay. You also said that a president or any person convincing a witness to change testimony would be obstruction. Is that right? Yes. Okay. And on page two, you said that a president deliberately impairing the integrity or availability of evidence would be an instruction. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Joining us now, Yoni Applebaum, senior editor at The Atlantic, and Jeffrey Rosen, president and CEO of the National Constitution Center and a law professor at George Washington. All right, Yoni, you actually laid out a long list of reasons in The Atlantic making the case for impeachment. Um, where does the new BuzzFeed piece fit into all of that? Well, I think it gives Congress even less excuse for its inaction than it had before. Impeachment made a lot of sense to trigger as a process going into this week. And now that we have yet another report of a uh, potentially well-evidenced crime, uh, it's high time that Congress got itself into gear. Uh, Jeff, I've got my uh, trusty copy of the Constitution uh, here. It in brings which, it everywhere. Yeah, because you can put it in your pocket. In Section 3, it says the Senate shall have the sole power to try all impeachments. When sitting for that purpose, they shall be on oath or affirmation. When the President of the United States is tried, the Chief Justice shall preside, and no person shall be convicted without the concurrence of two-thirds of the members present. President, you and I have had this conversation several times before. The case for impeachment may get stronger. It may be there, but the practicality of impeachment in our current environment is low. Uh, the, the, the likelihood is low. A lot of people said that in 1973, too. Tell me how that all plays out. Well, in 1973, initially Republicans were skeptical, but once they saw clear evidence of obstruction of the president ordering lies to Congress to cover up wrongdoings, then Republicans changed their mind and once not enough votes to save him in the Senate, he resigned. Here too, it is conceivable that if the allegations are corroborated by clear textual evidence, the political climate could shift. Republicans in the Senate might conclude that there was a clear violation, and therefore it's not inconceivable that you could get three quarters votes to uh, uh, convict, or even two thirds, which is all that's necessary. All right, Jeffrey, history lesson. James Madison wrote about a president potentially acquiring the office through corrupt means. Um, what if that's the case? What if the president acquired the office through corrupt means, then what? Well, first of all, I really have to recommend Yoni's phenomenal piece in The Atlantic, which suggests that corruption of the kind Madison was concerned about uh, connecting with foreign leaders and engaging in bribes uh, would be impeachable even if there were not a technical crime. Uh, Madison would not have countenance impeachment over what he called maladministration, simply not doing the job well. But if, of course, we concluded, and there was evidence, that the reason President Trump, Trump ordered uh, Cohn to lie to Congress was to cover up evidence that he was acquiring the office by corrupt means, by basically encouraging Putin to interfere in the election, that would strengthen the case even further. But simple violation of the obstruction statute, even without that additional corruption, would make the case for impeachment as strong as it was in the Nixon era. Yoni, let's talk about the practicality of this again, because uh, we are now two years away from a presidential election uh, where the argument about uh, against Donald Trump is as strong in political quarters as it may be in legal quarters, although I would recommend people read uh, your article because of the way you've uh, laid it out. What's the, what's the, if you thought that Donald Trump either acquired the office by, by uh, improper means or has conducted himself in a way that qualifies for impeachment, what should people who believe that be thinking about? Is impeachment the, the practical course or is 
figuring out a way to not make to make sure Donald Trump is not the president of the United States the more practical course? Well, I think it's important to think about impeachment as a process rather than an outcome. So it gives us a, a structured way to weigh the charges, to lay them out before the public, to debate them. The fact that we're having this conversation suggests those, those charges are already out there and, and the public already is debating them. But we're not doing it in, in the mechanisms that the founders devised. Donald Trump has sub a, a wide variety of, of long-standing norms and procedures uh, that have sustained American democracy. And the right response to that is to turn to a rule-based process as delineated in the Constitution, to, to use norms and procedures to, to counter the way that, that he has destabilized them, and then in turn his opponents have largely discarded them. And impeachment gives us a way to put some process in order and to put this debate where it belongs. Uh, and that's really a question of duty for Congress more than it is of political practicality. Wow. Jeffrey, on the long list of items that are under investigation, and it is a long list, what, rises, what if anything, uh, rises to the level of high crimes and misdemeanors? I think that everyone, Republicans and Democrats, agree that uh, suborning perjury or ordering false statements to Congress is a clear federal crime and that it would qualify as an impeachable offense. It was in the Nixon administration, a milder form of alleged obstruction was impeachable over Clinton. So setting aside the question of proof and corroboration, if Trump, President Trump did what uh, BuzzFeed alleged uh, that he did, and Mueller uh, reports that, then that would be a paradigmatic impeachable offense. Guys, thanks very much for your analysis of this. Yoni, thanks for your great article. Yoni Applebaum is the Washington Bureau Chief for the Atlantic. Jeff Rosen is uh, uh, the CEO of the National Constitution Center and a law professor at George Washington. It's a tough thing to prove. Yeah, but I I every day it gives us more reason to at least be discussing this. It's kind of fascinating to me that just when you think you've heard enough, there's more. Hey, MSNBC fans, thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on that button down there and click on any of the videos here to watch the latest interviews and highlights. You can get more MSNBC for free every day with our newsletters. Just visit msnbc.com newsletters to sign up now.